Hello, I'm Atu Jamir and you're watching Hornbill TV's Prime at Night. Now, news and details. The center on Thursday denied that visiting Iranian Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdullayan raised the controversial remarks on Prophet Muhammad made by suspended PJP leaders that drew widespread anger in the Arab countries. An Iranian statement had claimed that its Amir Abdullayan had raised the controversial remarks in a meeting with National Security Advisor Adit Doval. My understanding is that this issue was not raised during the conversation between the External Affairs Minister and his Iranian counterpart. And I quoted spokesperson of the Ministry of External Affairs, Arindam Bakhti, as saying, Facing widespread anger in the Arab countries over the controversial comments on the Prophet, the government also said it has made it clear that the remark do not reflect the views of the government. Several West Asian countries, including Iran, Kuwait, Qatar and Saudi Arabia, have lodged their protests before India over the alleged objectionable remarks made by now suspended PJP spokespersons against the Prophet and Islam. The ruling part of the Janata Party has already suspended both Nupur Sharma and Naveen Kumar Jindal. A review of the social health responsibility campaign in Kohima was conducted today at the De Oriental Grand Hotel in Kohima. The campaign was initiated by the Kohima Chief Medical Office in collaboration with the District Administration and the Association of Kohima Municipal Wards Panjayat. The Chief Medical Officer of Kohima, Dr. Vizokolo Teo, said the social health responsibility campaign is to protect people with comorbidities and also aims to reduce risk morbidity, mortality and from, from hypertension and diabetes. It also aims to identify comorbid diseases prevalent in the community. Theo said 9,243 households have been surveyed in Kohima during the campaign from March to April in 2022. 12 cases, highest new hypertension and diabetes uh, cases de detected, uh, new cases. Uh, seven that is at new market highest number of cases detected uh, hypertension uh, diabetes or both hypertension and diabetes is uh, at pwd 37 new market is 33 followed by officer seal 25 cases and new reserve uh, 22 highest opd turnout is new market with 156 followed by d block officer seal colony 134 no new cases were detected at forest and supply colony also speaking at the program amar deep singh Bhatia, principal secretary health and family welfare said that prevalence disease of hypertension and diabetes were very high in Nagaland and stressed on the need to create awareness of preventive measures to ensure the people of getting the right health and treatment. The response says that we should focus on prevention rather than the treatment part. If we can prevent the disease, that is the best public health response. Uh, which is possible and this is what as a community as a society we should be doing so this com campaign as part of the outreach through the health melas by increasing the awareness if it has been able to achieve in some manner by bringing in those preventive elements preventing it, the preventive elements means how we change our lifestyle we have more exercise, we control our diet. Assam Chief Minister Manta Biswa Sarma on Thursday inducted two PJP MLAs as new ministers in his council and reshuffled a few portfolios. Nalbari MLA Jayanta Mala Barua and Nandita Gorlosa representing Haflong Assembly constituency in the Mahasan district were administered the oath of office and secrecy by Governor Jagdish Muki at Srimanta Samkardev Kalak Shetra. Barua, a two-time MLA and political sec secretary to Sarma, has been given public health engineering, skill, employment, entrepreneurship and tourism departments, while Gorlosa has been allocated power, cooperation, mines and minerals, indigenous and tribal faith and culture departments. 
Three more ministerial berths are lying vacant and PJP sources said that they would be filled in soon. Currently, the ministry has strengths of 16, including the CM. The Election Commission of India said the presidential elections will be held on July 18 and the result will be declared on July 21st. The EC announced that date on Thursday while addressing a press conference. The term of Office of President Ramnath Kovin will be ending on 24 July. Rajiv Kumar, Chief Election Commissioner of India, said... The Election Commission said that 4,809 members of the Electoral College, comprising MPs and MLAs, are set to elect the su successor to incumbent Ram Nath Kovind. Chief Election Commissioner Rajiv Kumar noted that Kovind's term ends on July 24 and his successor should be in place before that. He said the notification for the poll will be issued on June 15 and June 29 will be the last date for filing nominations. So far, no political party has named its choice for the top constitutional post. As per Article 62 of the Constitution, an election for the next president must be held before the completion of the incumbent's term. In a huge setback for the ruling Mahavikas Agati coalition in Maharashtra, a special court in Mumbai on Thursday denied the pleas filed by Maharashtra's minister Nawab Malik and former minister Anil Deshmukh seeking a day's bail to vote in the Rajya Sabha's election. The six RS seats from Maharashtra will go to polls on June 10, Friday. Both Deshmukh and Malik senior NCP leaders are in jail in connection with separate money laundering cases being probed by the Enforcement Directorate. Deshmukh was arrested by the ED in November 2021 in a money laundering case. Malik was arrested by the ED on February 23 this year in connection with a money laundering probe linked to the activities of fugitive gangster Davod Ibrahim and his aides. After hearing extensive arguments by all the parties, the court on Thursday refused temporary bail to Malik and Deshmukh. The ED had opposed their pleas saying that prisoners do not have voting rights under the Representation of the People Act. The setback comes just a day ahead of the Rajya Sabha polls as every vote is crucial for the Shiv Sena-led MVA of which the NCP is a constituent to get the Sena's second candidate Sanjay Pawar elected. A family of three and a little child have tragically lost their lives after they were buried alive in landslide that occurred in two places in Garu Hills early in the morning of Thursday. Three members of a family were killed in a landslide that occurred in the Kambergi block region of West Garu Hills early Thursday morning while a two-and-a-half-year-old boy died from a similar incident in the Bitasing region of Southwest Garu Hills district. The incident occurred after Garo Hills was lashed by heavy rains late Wednesday night. The three members of a single family were buried alive in the landslide that occurred in Jibalgir village around 45 kilometers from Tura. The father and his son survived the tragedy and are in critical condition at a hospital while the wife and two other children lost their lives. In a separate incident, a two-and-a-half-year-old child, Tanush Hajong, lost his life when their house was destroyed in a landslide in Samati village in Pitasing Block in southwest Garo Hills at around 4 a.m. on Thursday. The Commission for Education Diocese of Kohima today felicitated the rank holders and subject toppers from the Catholic schools of Nagaland. This year, nine Catholic schools got 10% in HSSLC and 90.68% in HSLC. Bishop of Kohima Diocese congratulated all the successful candidates and said that this is not the end of their striving and hard work but another point of departure. He asked them to make resolution to work harder to achieve greater heights.
the schools and the towns. You know, the Catholic Church has spread its branches to the utmost interior of Nagaland. And I must congratulate those schools abroad, laureates, such person with success, especially schools like in Tamilu, in Shamatu, in all those remote places. And that is the credit for which I like to congratulate our fathers, sisters, the teachers, who because of their dedication and hard work bring up our students. Of course, it is easy in the town, in the cities, to get teachers, to get or have the, or the necessary facilities by which they are able to make or mold an environment for studies. But for me, the real achievement definitely, or rather, I must congratulate those in the remotest area who bring success and come out successfully in these examinations. United Naga Tribes Association on Border Areas has raised a pertinent issue recently of resuming the oil extraction in the Naga area that falls under the so-called disputed area belt and beyond. The UNTABA has stated in a press release that they will consider a legal course of action so that the rightful relief is due and find the right historical facts. Speaking to Hornbill TV, the chairman of UNTABA, Hukaviti Yiptomi, said that it was disheartening to learn of indifferent attitude of the government of Naglin for all these years, failing to address the issue in the right perspective. Let's have a look. Aviti Yeptomi, who is the president of UNTABA, and yesterday they had released a, a press release, they had issued a press release regarding the oil exploration in uh, the disturbed area belts of uh, Assam and Nagaland border. And sir, can you please give us a little uh, highlight on that press release of what uh, you had issued yesterday? So from Assam government side, they are extracting the oil and you know, petroleum resources from 40, 50 years back now. Mm -hmm. So even if Nagalian side does not uh, extract uh, petroleum products from our side, mm -hmm. uh, definitely it is uh, you know draining. The petroleum products is being drained from our some side. So it is a big loss for the Naga people. Mm -hmm. But the crux of the matter is that the boundary line between Assam and Nagaland is still at dispute. Mm -hmm. Now. Uh, basically, we have seven, uh, dis uh, six disputed area belts. Okay. 
So, and that falls from, from the Mabu district to uh, reaching Moon district mm -hmm. till, uh, you know, uh, Tizit. So on that uh, part of land, I may say that they contain uh, petroleum products, I, I mean, below the surface. So we must see, the government of Bede has to see in what manner we should be in a position to extract oil from our site, mm -hmm. even though the boundary is yet to be settled. And uh, beside that, the government of the day should also see that uh, since the government of Assam is draining a lot of uh, petroleum products from uh, underground, but on the part of the Nagaland, Naga people's land, mm -hmm. so we should get a royalty. And the government of uh, Nagaland has to, you know, um, take uh, this issue seriously. When we met uh, the Honorable Minister of Assam, okay. who is in charge of border affairs, Mr. Atul Bora, mm -hmm. on 26 January, this uh, this year, mm -hmm. we told him that uh, uh, the, the government of Assam in Nagaland, uh, actually, Chief Minister of Assam in Nagaland met on 24th at Guwahati, January 24th. We appreciated the government of Assam in Nagaland for trying to settle the border issue outside the court. That's why we met the when we met the um, Honorable Minister of Border Affairs, we told him that Assam government should consider for withdrawing the civil suit number two of 1988, which was filed uh, by the AGP government in 1988 against the Election Commission of India, Minister of Home Affairs, and the government of Nagaland. Saying that all this, uh, saying that the state of Nagaland Act 1963 mm -hmm. cannot be final uh, boundary line. That's the contention, main contention is that. Whereas, According to history, the, the, the recorded uh, histories we have uh, is that beyond Nagaland, on the Assam side, we have uh, 4,974.16 miles of our land inside Assam. We are, that's why we have uh, met uh, Chief uh, Prime Minister also Modi some years back. We have met Home Minister also, this uh, Amit Chaji, here in Dimapur. We have met uh, the negotiator, the, the, the RN Ravi, uh, many times, saying that the Assam and Nagaland boundary should be resolved based on the historical facts. Now, unless we do that, Naga people will, you know, lose a lot of land, which was ex actually part of Naga people's land in those days. Government of Assam has to pay a lot of, uh, you know, um, compensation to Naga people, not only for petroleum products but forest products, because all these areas now they have, they are still under a so-called reserve forest, but uh, all those reserve forests, there is no more reserve forest actually. Everywhere it is, uh, you know, settled. They have a lot uh, the settlement of uh, other people actually, from mainland Indian and uh, our boundary, I mean, our bordering uh, country like Bangladesh. That's why we have been complaining that it should not be. But when the government of the day, whatever government, whichever government it may be, when they are not serious about it, I think uh, we cannot expect more than that. During 1970s, uh, when uh, Dr. Okshasama was uh, chief minister, the Karbi people have come down here in Dimapur and then they have uh, assured that they will come to Nagaland. They will live under Nagaland, uh, along with those parts of land. They assured. And then they wrote a letter to the Prime Minister of India also that they want to, they are willing to stay under Nagaland. But government, the successive government have failed to, you know, take up those issues in its appropriate uh, manner and on time. That is how the case is, you know, uh, lying still like this. According to data, uh, the Assam uh, state, I mean, the state of Assam earns uh, annually around rupees 2,000 crore or something, if I'm not mistaken, in uh, uh, extraction, oil extraction, annual revenue they get uh, as royalty. So, sir, uh, I just wanted to ask if Naglin does get the royalty from these disturbed area belts this uh, you know the those disturbed areas between Nagaland and Assam 
how much do you t think that we as a state will get also in royalty and are the nagas being deprived right now of special it, you know it's it's a like dominoes falling so do you think uh, it is how much do you think nagaland as a state will get and are be, are we being deprived actually i cannot uh, calculate in terms of uh, monetary things mm -hmm. because uh, in fact only if we have to calculate that, those things we have to come to a very scientific uh, approach in uh, in how many cubic uh, you know the petroleum is being drained from nagaland side those things are technical matters and uh, i think uh, government of the day should uh, consider those things that's all we have for now keep watching hornbill tv